Okay, in part two of this video, we're gonna disassemble the headlights and work on putting projectors inside the headlight housing. Okay, it's time to prep the headlight for baking and we'll do one at a time. I'm gonna remove this bolt right here. I believe that's a T20 and it doesn't look like it's tight there. I'm gonna remove this cover and bulb. Have LED bulb here. If you wanna replace your regular halogen bulbs with LED, I have another video on my channel that shows how to do that and how to aim the lights. So that's another option which would be a lot easier than retrofit, but I think retrofit is much better. And also remove this. I'm gonna preheat oven to 300 degrees and keep headlight there for eight minutes. I'm gonna use a piece of wood under the headlight and keep lens up. Okay, oven is ready. Just in case you have fire extinguisher ready. I'm gonna put in an oven for eight minutes and I'll stay here watching and make sure it's not getting out of control. Okay, time is up. Let's move the headlight into office to work on it. Gonna wear gloves just in case for now. Looks like all the tabs are pretty easy. There you go, I think I got it. This tool is definitely very helpful. Do it slowly, because you want to make sure that glue is staying where it's supposed to. It'll help when it comes to putting everything back together. Again, this tool is just perfect for this. It's out. Overall, it was pretty easy. And now we're gonna work on this side, getting it prepped for projector. Gonna try to take this thing out with the long pliers. And it's out. And it looks like we could use this opening to push some wires through. Trying to see which shroud would be better, the black one, silver. So I'll try to put in projector through the opening and see which one will actually look better on this side then. So for now I'll remove those three small Phillips screws. Now I can push this through. I think both of them look nice, but I think silver one is a little bit better. Just want to show you how projector gonna look on a truck with a black shroud. And with a silver shroud. That's how it's gonna look with halo. It's a black shroud with halo. I think I've read somewhere some complaints about this shroud that it's too short, that it's not deep enough. Which kind of true, but at the same time, from here, from this view, I don't think it really matters. 
What I like about this shroud is that you don't have to do any cutting. As you can see, there's plenty of room in the back, so no cutting required. I really think both of them look very good. To me, it's even tough to say which one's better. And I spent probably weeks looking at different pictures to see which one to go with. And in reality, when it's also going to be covered by the headlight lens, it's not going to be that noticeable. So it really doesn't really matter which one you go with. In my case, I think this one is going to be better than this one. I was looking at the lens also. And initially I thought I just have to clean the outer portion, but it looks like right here there's some dirt that's actually inside. So I'm going to try to remove this portion and I'm going to have to clean on two sides. Okay, let's talk about halos or more specifically how to secure halos to shrouds. Back in the days you would use glue to secure halos to shrouds, but the negative side of it is that glue could get uh, yellowish as time goes on. So it's better to use some kind of installation wire. Since initially I wasn't sure if I'll go with silver or black shrouds, I bought black installation wire and a silver one. What I like about those halos is it has that small hole on the side, on three sides. So you could use that to secure the halo to the shroud with a wire. Some other halos don't give you that option, no small holes on the side and if that's the case you would have to secure this wire just right there. Profile performance also gives option to use smoke rings and it is attractive option for two reasons. Number one is if you do use wire through here you can cover the halo with this and the wire is not going to be that visible. And second reason is if you have especially if you have a blacked out headlights, black shroud it looks much better if it's covered like that. Negative side of smoke rings is a halo light output. It's not gonna be as bright as without them. I'm gonna do some tests just to show you guys options you would have. Unfortunately, I won't be able to install smoke ring directly on the halo because to do that, I would have to take those three holes. I'd have to cut them off and I won't do that. So I'll do it like this. I'll connect to a battery and you'll see how bright it is with this, this cover and without it. I'm gonna also put black wire and silver wire here on the side so you'd be able to see if you can see them with this cover on or not. So here it's two of them without cover. Obviously the one on the right has cover now tough to see which is good but I put insulation wire black one here and silver one there looks much better than I expected I can't see the wire at all now I'm gonna try to switch to ember Be honest, I was actually very impressed at those smoke rings. They seem to be still pretty bright. I'd say if I was doing a blackout headlights or even black shroud, I'd definitely use that. But since I decided to go with a silver and without the cover, it'll be a little bit brighter. I think I'll still do this. But I'll keep those just in case and maybe at next project for some other vehicle, I'm gonna use those. Okay, let's try to put Halo here. And first step is have to make sure there is a small holes in all three things. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it did not come already with holes in it, so I have to make them. And I'll use a push pin for that. I bought this kit on Amazon for about $7, but it's turned out to be useless. So I'll just return this and I'll just use a regular push pin. And it looks like this push pin, I damaged this, it went too far. So I guess I will end up using smoke covers for this. Gonna cut those off. I'm gonna clean top of this. So even though initially I wanted 
to do insulation with those to get a little bit brighter and to have that look instead of this look. On the bright side, installation like this is going to be a lot easier. So I'll make a little hole right here and that's for wiring. So let's see if it's going to work. Looks like I'll need to make it a little bit wider on this side. Let's see how it's going to be now. Looks much better. Now I just need to mark three locations for the installation wire. Do one at the top, one like right here, and one about here. So if you look at it as a clock, it'd be 12 o'clock, four and eight. Try to make a hole with push pin. It's not too easy, I'll try to use a small bit. Got some silver installation wire. Place that has a wiring, it has a bigger opening right there. I think it's actually going to be easier if I'll first put this on and have wire sticking out. Now let's try to connect it. Okay, time to tighten them with uh, long needle pliers. It looks good. I'm gonna cut some of the excess insulation wire. To get this through the reflector, I'll have to cut a bigger hole in a reflector or I might be able to deep in this connector. If you do decide to deep in it, make sure you remember which wire goes where. So from this side, red goes on top. This is pick tool, I pushed into the connector itself, into the metal part, then slide it out. And it's out. I'm gonna wipe down this shroud. Gonna install this into the projector. I'm getting ready to install it into the headlight. Put this one in. Goes like this. I used twenty seven millimeter socket, maybe twenty six would work as well, but not sure. Put this bracket on. Put those two pins back on. Gonna temper install HID bolt here. Turn lights on, see if it's gonna work. Try to connect the front signal one. I'm gonna disassemble this headlight. Gonna use T20 to remove this bolt right here. 
and this headlight is ready for baking as well just remove a couple things here and t20 screw or bolt i let this one bake a bit more 10 minutes instead of 8 and it does feel a lot harder out as well i'll start with removing this thing i'll just use a long needle pliers it's out now i'm gonna work on putting halo on a shroud now that i know what i'm doing it's gonna be a lot faster now that the other headlight is pretty much done I'm gonna cut the small holes off it's a shame that it didn't work on the last one and because it didn't work on the last one i'll have to do this one as well with the smoked halo cover now I'll have to make an opening for the wire and I'll do it just like another one and do it at the bottom and you could see the bottom one is on this shroud is where the bolt holes are wider smaller one on top, wider on bottom but obviously look at the projector and compare see the wider right here and top or smaller doesn't look nice but doesn't matter as long as the halo and halo cover are gonna cover it just a little bit more looks good now you're gonna need to drill three holes on this thing and you'll do one at 12 o'clock one at four one at eight i'll need three pieces of silver station wire obviously not gonna exact location here but same thing 12 o'clock four and eight I'm gonna install this rubber cover and remember that it has a bigger gap that one goes where the wire is okay I'm gonna install the installation wire where it should be going looks pretty good now I'm gonna tighten those three sets of wires I'm gonna cut off a bit of excess. I'm gonna secure the shroud to the projector. I deep in this one, facing connectors, right goes on top. Gonna push all those wires through the bottom hole. On this side, I'm gonna insert the silicone piece. Insert this bracket. Just can tighten it for now. Before doing anything else, I'm just gonna confirm that the halo is working. So I'm gonna put this connector back. Just check halo is working. So I'm gonna fully tighten this nut. Like I said, I'm using 27 millimeter. And I think that's the right size. 26 might be too small. So I'm gonna install this bolt holder. Gonna have to find that as a small bolt, but for now I'm gonna temporarily install the HID bulb here just to test it out. I'm gonna test this side as it's closer to the battery. This is just a halo only. Thing looks pretty cool. Now check with the light on, 
see if you can see Halo through the projector. I'm gonna clean projector and reflector. There's still a little bit of dirt or prints on it. You can also test the amber light. Now I'm gonna do a final clean inside the housing, meaning removing the prints and cleaning the actual projector lens. Then I'm gonna reassemble. Now I will remove the HID bulb. I'm gonna clean this area with alcohol. Shroud I'll just clean with this just because I have no idea how durable this shroud is against alcohol. Wipe it off here too. Unfortunately I see a little bit of dirt inside and I can't get to it through here. Only way I can is through here but the opening is very small. I might have to try to take it out again. Definitely good thing that all of this is secured with nuts, washers, bolts, not with the glue. So I'm gonna do another clean now that it's all disassembled and this time I'm gonna use gloves. Gloves on. I'm gonna use this but it has some stuff sticking out so I'll make sure it's completely wet in alcohol. Also I clean more here the reflector with rubbing alcohol. Got some pieces in there. I'll use this to clean. Looks very good. I don't see anything there now. Now I'm gonna assemble it. Now it's good to go back. Double check again. Looks good. Now on this side I'm gonna do the wipe down again. Let's put this one back in. Now let's work on lens. And unfortunately I'm gonna conclude part two right here. The reason is I get stuck with cleaning out my headlight lenses and I'll show you how far I got or where I failed. So as you can see this side is all ready to go. This side is ready to go as well. Everything clean here. I use like a rubbing alcohol to clean the lens and reflectors. Clean the shroud I just use a normal like rag you would use to clean sunglasses just to make sure there is no prints anywhere and since obviously i'm putting some money into those headlights i decided that i want to make sure my headlight lenses are pretty clean so i start by removing the trim piece of the headlight it was inside the headlight lens if you look closely you could see that even here there's some dirt well that stuff probably can be cleaned by rubbing alcohol as well or some other compound but it shouldn't be tough anyway the actual big deal was the lenses themselves there are not many videos on how to clean inside the headlight lens i asked a body shop place and they told me that you could clear inside just like you would outside with compound so just to show you an example this one i did inside with a compound polish outside with uh, 400 600 grit and 2000 grit and clear coat it's not bad, but you could see that it's not as clear. You still see a little bit of distortion. This one I did inside and out. I used clear coat from two sides. You can definitely see a lot more distortion here. So I bought another used headlight for 35, 40 bucks on eBay. Had a couple plastic tabs broken, but the lens was in decent shape, but not very clean. So I put clear coat on this one. Then try to remove the clear coat. Pretty much it's just I, I gave up. I'd say the main reason I gave up is no matter how good I'll make the inside of the lens look, I wasn't sure if there'll be enough of clear coat or if I put my own clear coat on it, not the factory one. 
I have no idea how long that's gonna last because if it's not gonna be clear in two months for example or even six months I would have to take the whole headlight off, remove the lens again so I decided it's not worth it. Other important point is I spent about $35-$40 on this used headlight. I spent decent money on all the polishing products and I'm sure total was about $100-$150. To so then I finally decided to buy a TYC aftermarket headlights for Honda Ridgeline and a pair on Amazon with Prime Delivery was about $130. As you can see here, packed really nice, neat and lens is obviously in perfect condition. Now obviously this is aftermarket. I'm pretty sure that the lens should last at least 5 years versus if I were to clean out lens inside and out by myself, I really doubt it would last that long. I'm not sure yet what I'll do, maybe I'll just use this lens, but the housing, I'm gonna use a factory one, since the ones I have are in good condition, nothing is broken. Here is my retrofitted housing, here is the one from TYC. From look of it, it looks almost identical, only thing here is I had to remove one portion of the headlight with a long needle uh, pliers, and here not mistaken it's just a small nut to take it off but again i'm not sure yet if i'm gonna use it for that purpose or i'll just use a lens and then who knows maybe i'll sell remaining stuff on ebay so that's how i'm gonna conclude this video let me know if there is any place you know of where i could potentially mail those lens for full complete restoration let me know if factory put some kind of clear code on those headlights when they manufactured them or it's just part of the plastic mix for it to be UV protectant. If you have any questions about this project, please leave comments below and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. I'll leave you Amazon affiliate link for those headlights. It might be a good idea to just do those headlights retrofit because they're pretty cheap. And my understanding is TYC, although it's not a factory original part, they're not a bad quality overall. I also leave links for other parts on Amazon, whatever I could find. And if you decide not to use Halo for your projectors, the whole process is going to be a lot easier because that does take a lot of time. Again, thanks for watching my videos. Subscribe. You'll see you next part hopefully soon. And I'll see you next time.